Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. A lot of you have been asking me how do I get better at playing Monster Hunter and honestly speaking it's a game so it's kind of different for everybody but I wanted to show off some basic strategies of what I do if I'm having trouble or I'm going up against a new monster. The thing I like to do is to literally go in there and do a hunt where my objective is not to hit the monster. I'm going in there as a good hunter would do to merely observe. So we're going to be taking the Rathian, which is probably the most basic of monsters, but I think the principles hold true for any other monster out there. So if you're having any trouble against a monster, hopefully this might be able to give you a hint. Okay, when you go in, make sure you have ample stamina because the last thing you want to be doing is running around and running around and then running out. And grab a paintball so you don't have to go and search for the monster because remember, this is an investigation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check out the monster's reaction to us when we're in long distance. Now, monsters will react differently if you are far away, mid-distance, or right up next to them. So understanding their attack patterns depending on where you are actually really makes a huge difference depending on what weapon you're using. Let's go ahead and let her roar here. Okay, we're going to try to take long distance and see how she reacts. Beginning doesn't count because we weren't sure where we were, but that was technically mid-distance. So mid to long she does fireballs or she likes to jump up in the air and try to snack at you. Okay, so long distance we see that she did a run towards us and then a chomp. We're going to go long distance again. Here she goes with the run and the chomp. Okay, uh, go further back. Okay, so that mid to long distance she does a single fireball. Add that to the list. Or she might even do a triple fireball. So this is really good to know that if she does a fireball, you want to make sure you check if she's going to do one or three. And around mid-distance, she jumps up in the air and does either a swirl to try to catch you off guard. Or we'll look at her other moves in a little bit. If she goes mid-distance again, she's jumping up and she's doing the twirl again. But if you notice, she's always turning around up to 180 degrees after she does like twirls or charges. So this is kind of the hint of where you can time your attacks. Let her come at you, plan the idea that her head is going to be coming right back around at you, get in a nice time quick hit and then get out. Okay, so if she flies towards you and she's not doing the twirls, she might do a backflip. It's good to know. The charge and the chomp again, so if we can get her to charge her chomp or fireball, there she goes again. So if you're a great sword user where you want to be able to set up, this might be a really great strategy, knowing that from a long distance, you can bait her into running after you, doing a chomp, and then she'll turn around right into the face of your sword. Okay, and so in just that little time, we've already learned quite a lot from the monster. And this, of course, does not account for when she's raging, which we'll check out. But from long distance, she has a tendency to charge after you and do a chomp. If it's mid to long distance, she has a tendency to either do a single or a triple fireball, or she might go up into the air and swerve at you to guide to get distance, or she might try to claw you. Either way, moving straight out of a straight line will protect you. Now, one thing we want to check now is the close distance to find out when you're right next to her, what does she do? Because you're going to be really close if you're doing, let's say, dual blades or sword and shield. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new hunt because I she had gone to another area. And remember, we're not doing this to win. We're just doing this to check out how she plays. Okay. Nice little fancy adept evade. <laughs> okay, let's get all up in her face. So let's go and hang around around her feet here. Okay, so here's a new move of her. She does a double tail whirl. So if she feels you're close, she'll try to knock you away by doing a double tail whirl. If she does a pause, she'll go and do a backflip and try to knock you away. That's good to know. There we were. At the mid to close distance, she does a charge in, which is very hard to avoid. Um, I call it the lawnmower attack. Okay, so she's trying to get a grasp on you. So if you're close distance, she'll either try to swipe you away, she'll try to do a little charge in, or she'll backflip you. This is really good to know because if you notice how low her tail hangs when she does backflips, so you could bait her into doing backflips so that you have a tail that's very easy to hit right as she does the backflip. Here she is long distance doing her charging just like we already showed in the first part. Oof, air pressure. And here we are by her feet again. And she does not like to seem to want you next to her. Like next to her at very close distance, she seems to want to get up in the air and backflip or try to get 
an idea of where you're at. There she goes in the air again. So yeah, this would be really annoying if you were a greatsword user trying to get a clear hit off on her head. You don't want to be near her feet because that's going to trigger her to go into the air and that's going to really throw off your positioning. So it's good to know that even from close distance, she'll spew fireballs, so that could also make in for some really nice opportunities. That air pressure is a killer. Okay, let's run in and get some more close distance. No, that's mid. Okay. Short to mid, she's doing the fireballs again. It's good. We get a tail swing. Nope, she wants to know where we're at. There's the tail swing we knew. And tail swings we've now proven that if you're by the feet, you're totally safe. So that's good to know. Let her turn around here. And here she goes again with the backflip, trying to get whoever is in front of her. She's trying to whap them away. So if you see people online who she's fighting and she's looking at them, beware of standing right in front of her because she might do a backflip. Now let's check out what she does when she goes into enrage mode because all monsters change their behavior once they go enraged. From here, we already know her basic attack patterns. We've gotten an idea of the timing of them, um, how long she takes to recover from them. So depending on your weapon, you can plan out how you want to attack. But when they go into an enraged state, I think a lot of people don't take the time to really see how a monster changes in order to understand it. So let's go check it out. Okay, after enough hits, she will do a roar and then she'll go into an enraged state. You'll notice the little fire fuming from her mouth. Now let's just take a quick look at what she does. Let's get her down from the ground so we can see. Whoa, that was much faster. So we already can tell here that her speed increases when she's enraged. Up, oh, fireball becomes a radius blast. Okay. Whoa, and she charges very fast. So she still does her charge and chomp. Try to bait her to do it. Notice just how much faster she is. When she turns around, she's off. So if you're doing a greatsword and you're used to triple charging, you're probably not going to get a triple charge off in that type of time space. She also takes to the air much faster, so if you just notice, she's very agile. Let's check out close to mid distance. If you remember, she used to charge us and we'd be able to get out of the way, but watch what happens in this mode. She is fast and then she sticks on you. She's charging, but no, she's not chomping. So what she does have, if you do this a few times, you'll notice is that she'll do what I call the lawnmower, which is she literally just wants to drive you out. So she'll run at you, she'll run at you, she'll run at you, and she won't stop until she does her final chomp animation. So if you're sort of like in her way, just don't even try to attack. If you get greedy, she will hurt you for it. She still does her tail thing when she's upset. Okay, if you notice the flames are gone, so she's no longer upset. So now we can go back to normal strategy. So we already know she's gonna turn her face towards us. That's kind of her signature thing. So we're gonna use that to smack her in the head a little bit. But it's just taking a hunt like this to see where their animations are, to see how they react when you're at long distance, mid distance, close distance, can really help in understanding the monster. Now, of course, online, it's gonna be kind of like a battle fest. The moment they're on somebody else, it's just gonna be a hit for all as long as they're not on you, but it is really good to know how to handle them solo so when the monster is going on you, you know how to deal with it. Because as I say, the really best multiplayer is when four solo hunters come together. Now another thing that I personally like to do is to grab a weapon and take one or two signature moves and just figure out, just testing, how I can work them into the routine with the animations that we're now aware of. So let's say Hunting Horn, I'm going to take this and if you hold forward and press X and A, you'll do this wonderful wind up slam. And what I'm right here, boom. Now we already know that Rathian is going to turn towards us if she goes and runs and chomps or anything like that. So we're going to take that to our advantage and we're going to see how we can work this attack in. Because technically you should be able to kill a monster using only one attack. It doesn't take the whole arsenal. Mixing in the other moves just makes it more fun and increases your rate of efficiency. So let's go ahead and check this out. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Superwoman, I guess. Okay, so she's bait, take the bait and switch. We're gonna wait for it, forward, and slam, and boom, get out of the way. And if you notice, 
This is going to hold true to every weapon, but you only have a limited time of window from when she turns around to when her head is at you and she does whatever she's going to do. So you want to time it a little bit earlier than you normally would think. Let's try this out here. I'm a little late, a little late, but I got lucky. She was doing fireball. We already know that she does three and does a little recovery, so we're just going to smack her around a little bit. This is getting greedy, but you know what? Sometimes you can get greedy. It's okay. I think figuring out when you can get greedy is another key to really increasing your hunting times. But I wouldn't worry about it too much earlier on. Okay, now she's in rage, so I want to be very careful. If she does lawnmower mode, I'm going to wait until she does that, a chomp. I do have to play my movement up song again because I am starting to move a little slower. So I'm going to play that. Okay, here's a good opportunity because she's doing a fireball. Oh, she's doing the triple, so it gives us an opportunity to come in here and smack. Get out from in front of her. And again, it's just a matter of dancing and hit in a way. Especially with this attack, at least. Nope, she didn't chomp. Don't go for it. If I had gone for it, she would have punished me. There she goes. She chomps. A little bit hot, fast. Go for it. Slam. Okay, good. We got a flinch. In case you guys didn't know, after you do enough set damage to a certain part of a monster, they will flinch. That could really save your butt if you get your timing wrong on some stuff. Okay, we're gonna just level ground is really annoying. You already know fireball is open territory for smacking. Yep, she's doing it again. I see I mean if you really want to be efficient with her, I think you need to stay behind her, or you need to be able to knock her out of the air because if she keeps going up like that, it can get very annoying. <laughs> Punished. Get out of there. If she knocks you over, just get out of there because close by or mid distance she can charge you again. And charge you again. And charge you again and so forth. See, we're now able to utilize this one move to really smack her down because we know what her animations are and we have an idea of how long we have between them. This is the difference between being good at a monster and being really good at a monster. Go ahead and smack her in. Anyways, this is how I like to hunt. This is how I like to think about the game. So I don't know if it's going to be any advice for any of you new players out there. But do go and grab a weapon and go in there and just observe the monster. And you'd be surprised how much you can learn. Go ahead and hit like down below if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really does make a difference for me. And if you have any tips for new hunters, go ahead and share it in the comments below. Until next time, happy hunting.